this has kind of been the Bill's Double Field show here today. We booked, uh, you, you've been my primary talk show booker on this program today. You got us the Moroccan interview, and you brought in Jim Daly to the program, too. Well, it's, yeah, I thought uh, Rhonda did a marvelous job, and Jim's going to do a marvelous job. Last segment, we talked uh, uh, about transparency, or therefore lack of transparency in some cases. Uh Jim is just the opposite. Uh, Jim is uh, uh, serves has been a individual in this community, and I what I admire most about Jim is that he's willing to tell you what he believes and willing to tell you what's what's happening. And uh, so when I mentioned to Jim come uh, higher education commission because it's been in the news quite a bit lately, but I for one don't know very much about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though I'm on the board of governors for uh, 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 Blue Ridge, I still and I probably know more about the Higher Education Commission than a lot of people. I don't know a lot about it, so I'm really looking forward to our discussion this morning, Jim. Likewise. Jim, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. What is the HEPC, and what is it supposed to do? The Higher Education Policy Commission is an organization that was created by the legislature to uh, to primarily study and, and assist the public education, particularly the colleges and universities across the state, and... Um, they have been a very active participant in many times in, a, in 90% of the decisions that were made in some of the smaller universities and colleges across the state, and also very helpful with Marshall and WVU. So it's a, it's a very interesting uh, organization that uh, cares greatly about students mm -hmm. and cares greatly about the, the production of students going into higher education and, and getting a better learning atmosphere. And how did you get on the HEPC, Jim? I think because I was chairman of the Board of Governors at WVU uh, for two years and uh, had the honor to uh, hire Gordon Gee, uh, among other things. I, I'm one of the few people, in that fact, there's only three of us that I can recall that served on the Board of Governors that served with four different presidents in eight years at WVU, which is kind of remarkable. Mm -hmm. But uh, all four uh, gentlemen were a lot of fun to work with and certainly a lot of fun to to recognize how they saw the growth of WVU and what they wanted, wanted, they wanted to get out of it. You mentioned President Gee. Your thoughts on his situation currently at WVU? Oh, I think that uh, he's going in the right direction, to be quite honest about it. This was something that actually started about three years ago, uh, and I, I'm a little bit surprised that everyone is – not really reticent of the changes that are going to be made because they were well well aware of it three years ago. Precipitated primarily out of COVID. Uh, everyone recognized that there were going to be financial hardships across the, across the spectrum. Uh, and because of that, it was going to impact the students and it was going to impact the faculty uh, just as much as it did anybody else in the country at that time. And as a result of that, in Many of the many of the institutions were able to semi-operate, most of them remotely, and that had, that had a dramatic effect on trying to get people to come back, uh, not just for professors and and uh, students, but uh, even the administration. They were always in a in a quandary as to whether to go to the office today or do I call in and work at home. So uh, it had a dramatic effect, and I think that's a result. Uh, that Gordon Gee saw coming uh, three years ago and wanted to tackle that situation uh, from a overall perspective. And I think he's, I think he's headed in the right direction. So and, you, you would disagree with the no confidence vote? Oh, very, very much so. Yeah. And primarily because those folks, uh, and I understand where they're coming from, but they knew about this long ago. Um, and, I guess they thought it would just go away, but the condition of all the institutions across the state are being diminished primarily by the lack of participation from getting new students, and that's the difficult uh, animal that you have to deal with. In addition to that, we were, all the institutions were highly affected by, by the lack of foreign students, and we had a lot of foreign students, uh, even uh, not just at WVU, but uh, in other institutions across the state, and they've almost completely disappeared. And they were a good revenue generator, obviously, for, for all the institutions. Do you feel as though the funds could have been managed better? 
Oh, there's no question that funds in, in all the institutions could be managed better. Uh, it's been a real struggle for everyone uh, to determine where do we spend our next dollar. Uh, I think it's interesting that the Higher Education Policy Commission has been charged with uh, determining as best they can through through the consolidation and and through the assistance of the various institutions across the state in property maintenance and what needs to be done and what has to be fixed. And I think there's going to be a lot of dollars available for that. But in addition to that, those dollars may be diminished to some extent because of the need of other institutions needing funds for other things other than property maintenance. Do you feel the state legislature has underfunded the universities? No, I, I applaud the state legislature because they have they have produced a, a lot of capital for the institutions particularly and, and funneled it through the Higher Education Policy Commission. Uh, we, we, on the other hand, have to be the, the overseers of those dollars and cents. And in doing so, we have to review this, for instance, the, the property maintenance issues for each institution. Each one of them presented a list of, in some cases, over 100 things that needed to be done within their institution or at their institution. And uh, we've asked them to prioritize to the best of their ability so that we can then sh backfill that with whether it can or can't be accomplished with the number of dollars that the legislature's provided. Uh, I applaud the legislature a great deal for, for what they've done uh, for the state of West Virginia in terms of higher education. Bill? Yeah, uh, Jim, uh, for the Policy Commission, uh, you oversee all the all the four-year schools and uh, two and four-year schools in the state except private institutions such as the, the private schools you have no involvement at all is that correct yes sir that is correct okay. we're strictly uh, operational with the public at public okay. schools as well as uh, and our our chancellor i'm very happy to say not only is the is the chancellor for our education policy commission but also the chancellor for the community and technical colleges Yes. And, and, and as a result of that, uh, we, we hear an abundance of information that most people wouldn't with respect to even the community and technical colleges. Yeah. You've recently instituted a, a formula funding uh, based in large part on performance, uh, which kind of it rem hopefully it remo removes or at least uh, uh, reduces the amount of favorite uh, uh, favorite funding out of the kind of behind closed doors. You, everything's up front. Everything is based upon formula performance. Would you speak to that, please? Well, you're, I think you're talking about the new funding formula that's been developed for trying to try and create dual enrollment for high school students. Uh, we think that it's going to be a, a a marvelous avenue. This year's the first year it's been instituted. This is this year's the first sort of. Uh, practice round that uh, everyone will go through and and hopefully the the, the public institutions uh, across the state will select uh, high schools not only in Berkeley County and, and Jefferson County Morgan County but all across the board to select particular students that they feel that would be really beneficial to financially help them with a dual enrollment where they could come out of high school with as many as maybe 16 credit hours of college college credit which would then very well send them in down the path of what needs to be done particularly in some of the particular disciplines that they're looking for yeah i was thinking actually it, it, i went a step farther and this is my my lack of knowledge of the policy commission uh that it's uh, uh that the amount of money that's allocated to a university be it a four-year school or even a two-year school is based upon performance being able to achieve a certain amount, uh, achieve certain thresholds, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And and that is that is the drive that they're trying to accomplish at this point, to engage the younger, the younger generation who are still in high school, to maybe seek a, that 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 higher level of education. We we all know that that, in terms of the trades, the trades are really lacking in, in uh, personnel to take care of our our basic needs around our business around our home but the college education has also diminished in some extent yeah. and I think COVID had something to do with that mm -hmm. I really do but I think this program will be a wonderful program 
if it works off the way that it works out the way we think it should with respect to uh, the students themselves and their desire to carry forward the uh, uh, and I'm coming back to the performance because I'm very intrigued about that uh, are the expectations of a from the performance base strictly uh, expectations for a large four-year school like WVU and Marshall the same as that from a smaller four-year school such as Shepherd. Oh yeah, and as a matter of fact, the, the the hopes I guess are that the smaller schools would would gain far more population in terms of student growth as a result of this program, because it's it will hopefully also attract the underprivileged individuals in in the high schools for an opportunity to financially be able to afford number one and number two have the ability to to gather some additional educational learning and go into college with a, with a real basis of, of what needs to be done. Now, this program, new program, is going to be implemented this coming year? Yes, sir. It's, okay. uh, it's just, it has just been implemented. There's the, there's the selection process has taken place. Uh, Shepard has not responded at this particular point in time, and they all have deadlines as to when, they're, when they'd like to participate and what schools and or colleges, uh, not just Shepard, but what schools and colleges that uh, have been attracted. Okay, so have not responded. Uh, what is the downside if a school does not respond? Well, the sad thing is that the people of, of the, the Panhandle, for instance, if, if Shepherds wants to draw their students from the Panhandle, that those particular students may not have the ability or the possibility financially, number one, to, to engage in additional education uh, and getting additional credits that through Shepherd. Uh, that would that would really help their promotion and their growth and development in education itself. And uh, uh, is Shepherd the only school that has not responded, or do you? No, do I you do know? not know okay. that. And I that's just unfair question I, anyway. Yeah. No, I don't. I do not know that. And the only reason I know that is because you know, I guess I represent the the, pan, the Panhandle, if yeah. you will. Yes. Uh, in the Higher Education Policy Commission, so I'm I'm, I'm mostly interested about what takes place within our our in the area of the woods and uh, not so much what takes place in the rest of the state but I know that the rest of the state is is all really uh, excited about these new funds yeah. if it's the legislature again provided that sure. information uh, how many folks are on the Commission well right now there's eight eight of them. We, okay. we have a we have a uh, capacity of ten there's eight of us two of which are ex officio uh, one is the superintendent of schools for the state and the other representative actually is a representative from uh, uh, CA, uh, the, um, the hospital facility in, in, in Charleston. Sure. CMAC. Okay. okay. And uh, each one of you have are selected with, with a region in mind. So, so it's, uh, it's spread fairly even across the state. All, all regions are represented? It, in, in terms of the board? Yes. Uh, yes yeah, yes. Uh, absolutely. The... Uh, the the prime the for instance the chairman is from is from Charleston, the vice chair is from Huntington, uh, the secretary is from Morgantown, uh, I of course is from Martinsburg, yeah, yeah. so it's uh it's a it's a general casting a, a a big cloth over the whole state. And what is it uh, t time or tenure for the uh, uh, what is your how long is your are your it does your appointment last? I, I think they're four-year appointments. Four-year, okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. So you joined in 2017. Yes. So you've been reappointed at least once. Yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Jim, how many of the uh, colleges and universities in the state are experiencing financial difficulties? Do you happen to know off the top of your head or percentage of them maybe? All of them. All of them to one extent or all, another? All of them, yeah. That's, there's no question. Some are far far worse shape than others uh, as many of you know uh, we had to take the unfortunate step to to shut down Audison and brought us uh, it was a very sad situation that that we had to uh, we had to take that kind of a step in terms of the Commission uh, the really good news out of that is that all of those students that were impacted by that shutdown have been replaced and put in in other institutions and, and many of them are happier because they they were felt uh, a need that they needed to learn more. And that's been provided to them. 
in, in all the disciplines and as well as the levels of their education. The, uh, the real property on, on schools, such as on the broadest, uh, is that owned by the school? Is it owned by the commission, policy commission? When the school closes down, will the commission, will the property revert to the commission? I would assume it would, Yeah, okay. but, but I really don't know the answer okay, to that sure. question. Yeah. Jim, are any other schools in danger of closing? You don't have to name them if you don't want to, but are there any that are on the brink? Well, I wouldn't say they're they're on the on the verge of closing, but I think they're they're under watch by the commission as to where they are financially in terms of number of days of cash available. Um, pretty simple measurement, really, but they're all they're all watching their dollars very very closely. And what there is a minimum, there is a recommended uh, uh, cash on hand for for so many days. Is what's the number? Of that is that I've heard fifty in the past. Is that reasonable? Fifty days. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot that don't have fifty days. Yeah, worth. but what is it? What is a recommended? When uh, when do you? What level do you have to get below before folks like the policy commission start getting very nervous? Well, in in, in my business, it's sixty days. Sixty, okay. Uh, but in in the commission, I, I really don't know the answer yeah, to that question. Okay. Jim, has it gotten any more difficult to clear the money through the federal government for these kids in regards to grants, loans, and such? No, uh, I can't say that. I, the one thing I'm very proud of in terms of the commission is they, they are a tremendous source for funding for, for any student who wants to, to continue on in a public education. Uh, and they are obviously behind the Promise Scholarship. Uh, they have difficulty, and they've had for the last two years, giving away all the money they got, which you, would shock a lot of people. Shocks me. Yeah. Uh, there's other financial avenues that the commission has that they many times get to the point of the, a new year school starting, and and they still got a lot of money that they can dispense. So it's, it's uh, part of that is, I think, because the students may want to may want to go to college, uh, but they're afraid to take on that take on that burden. And a lot of it is is not uh, interest bearing burden. It's 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 free money, but for some reason it, the, the, it just doesn't get out to the public enough. Is it that they don't know about it? Could there be a better job done of publicizing it? I, I think I think I think so, and I think if that falls down into the secondary the secondary systems, I think that the um, the uh, boards of education the uh, superintendent of schools, the counselors within those institutions uh, need to do a better job. Uh, I'll give you a prime example. Uh, I'm also associated with the West Virginia SSAC, and uh, we sponsor, not we, uh, an organization that I, I'm a chair, sponsors every year an academic achievement award and made presentations. I've made personally made presentations over the last five years. Um, a lot of and and these are for athletes, and band and band members and cheerleaders, uh, who have excelled academically, uh, and they they have their institutions have applied for them and they've received uh, excellent funds uh, to support them in their edu further education. Uh, the Panhandle's lack never been never been involved in that, and it, it distresses me because I know that all the schools. In, in the in the three county area, as well as the Hampshires and, and the Hardys, uh, they don't participate for some reason. I don't know if they don't get the proper word out or not, but there's there's funds that would recognize, and these kids are recognized uh, at the state high school football championship mm -hmm. every year. I would have to believe that they don't know about it because I can't imagine anybody would rather borrow money to go to college than get some type of scholarship. Well, it would be very, very beneficial. And the beauty of it is it, it, it filters down to the band band members, the cheerleaders, and not just mm -hmm. not just yeah. the athletic.